Thank you all for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays. Um, we are the ACF team. I'm Ian Paulson, the ACF product manager. We've got Matt Shaw, Phil Johnston uh, from the engineering team, and we've got Mike Mike Davy from our content team. We are uh, we, we've changed it, so we're now doing this on the first Friday of every month. We've gone monthly rather than um, every two weeks, so hopefully that just gives people a chance to to kind of hear more about it and and sign up with some more questions. Um, we are, we skipped last month, so we're back again. It's been a while. As always, we record these sessions. We put them on YouTube. We do a blog post on the ACF website under the Chat Fridays page um, with a kind of a catch up of, of what was asked in the session, what we talked about and the YouTube video. So that's a good place if you can't make it in the future. Um, actually, what we'll do is we, we can run the Q&A in the background. We were gonna spend the day or spend the session just talking through some of the results from the recent ACF annual survey that we ran um, a few months ago and we just recently published on the website. But if you've got any ACF related questions, any issues with the plugin, technical problems or questions about how to do things uh, with ACF, then feel free to stick them in the Q&A, uh, which is one of the buttons along the Zoom bar that seem to be changing every month. Um, it's the question mark one, or feel free to use the chat if that's easier as well. Um, let me just give a bit of a roundup, but so ACF related news. Uh, on Tuesday this week, we released ACF 6310, which I just put, oh, let me make sure the chat is going to everyone. So that is 6310. Uh, the 6310 release was predominantly a security fix or security release with a couple of security fixes. Um, we also did, uh, there's a couple of other enhancements, but there's actually quite a nice new feature for anybody who is, well, I guess similar to I was the other day where I was creating a field group and I knew exactly all of the fields that I wanted to create in the field group. And there's quite a few of them. And I found it quite slow to add those fields in quick succession. So we've got this new button. Um, uh, there's a nice GIF in the, uh, in the blog post showing how you can add a new field and then with one click of a, a, the new button, you can close that field and add a new one straight away after. So you can kind of um, have have a much quicker workflow of just creating fields and, and then punching through and creating another one, um, one after the other, rather than having to go and find the close button and then go and add and click on the add new button, which is somewhere else. It's kind of a much more streamlined um, user experience. Um, so yeah, that 6310 release uh, has got some, some uh, security fixes as well as we said and i think the best thing to or the, the best thing to say about the re recent releases because we've gone 637 638 639 and now 6310 some of those are security releases um and some of those or one of those also has a new method to get updates if you're running the free acf plugin um so i think what the best thing to do is for everybody to make sure that if they are running the free version of acf they will get onto 6310 um, as soon as possible anyway. And then that ensures that you're always going to be getting um, ACF versions of the free plugin from our servers for updates. Uh, and I'm dropping a link now into the chat, which is how to install ACF free, how to upgrade to ACF free to make sure you're getting the version of ACF from us. Um, and needless to say as well, this doesn't, um, well, not needless to say, it's important to say this doesn't affect ACF Pro. If you've got ACF Pro installed, you will be seeing updates as normal, and you should also be seeing the 6310 uh, release available to up update to. So yeah, get on 6310. Uh, and if you're unsure how to do that for the free version, that's the link to do that now. So what else? Right, so yeah, I think that's probably the things we want to cover before diving in. As I said, drop some any questions if you want. Um, let me just share my screen now for the ACF annual survey. So just a bit of background, if you hadn't uh, come to any of the sessions where we did talk about this, this the annual survey is something that we started last year um, and we ran it, uh, well, as you can see the results here, we ran it um, and opened uh, up, the, published the results at the end of last year or near the end. We had over 2000 people uh, fill in the survey, it was really, really helpful. There's a whole bunch of questions around ACF, uh, about how you use ACF, what type of features you use, what type of field groups you use, or, uh, what field types even. Um, 
and also how you, you build with WordPress and how you build with ACF. So it was really, really, really helpful last year to have that data to try and understand just a wider usage of ACF. And we've, we're doing it annually. Um, so we ran it again this year. We had less people that responded, which was, I guess, understandable in the sense that last year was the big, the first time we did it. And we made a, a big song and dance about it, a big splash about it. Um, and obviously there was a load of people that uh, helped us out. And and again, you know, it's still a big number, sort of 1300 people filled out the survey, um, which which is really helpful, I think. And, and over time, seeing like the, the data as we run it every year and we see um, we see the change in, in results and trends. I think it's become really helpful for us, but it becomes helpful to understand general WordPress usage and, and how people are building with WordPress, especially as, you know, we go from this sort of transition from classic to block and full site editing. Um, so yeah, let's, I'm going to kind of replace the need for you to read the blog post necessarily, but going to just go through to this, this nice graphic. Um, so yeah, we had a smaller amount of people, um, take the survey. We I might actually do some of this side by side. We had an increase of people saying that 71% of respondents said they use ACF on all their websites, which is, a, a, it, it feels like a vanity metric, but it isn't in a way because we kind of still understand that you, you build a site and use the right tools for that website. So we don't understand, we don't expect or want ACF to be used everywhere necessarily, because it's got to be the right tool for the job. It's got to be the right site, but obviously, yeah, 71% that, that's kind of um, encouraging and knowing that it's one of those foundational plugins that you use to help build out a site from the ground up. Uh, oh, and this feels kind of expected that the majority of our people responding uh, are developers building sites. Um, a, a, a significant proportion work for an agency. Um, and yeah, most maintain one or three sites. I think that's on a monthly basis. And and in terms of what type of sites people are building, I think we refined this question in terms of answers last time a little bit, but that's interesting. So this is 2013, 2013, 2023. Um, it'd be interesting to see what 2013 data would look like, but classic WordPress was kind of the far winner there of what type of sites people were building with hybrid themes and block themes, full site editing, quite small. Um, that seems hybrid themes have now taken taken over classic really. Um, so it, it feels like there's a, there's a bigger shift as the year's gone on to block editor, even if that's just giving clients the block editor for the content and having the hybrid theme, which is, you know, developing and creating the templates around outputting the content and the content being the block editor rather than the classic editor and the tiny MCE editor. So we've seen, yeah, definitely a rise in the hybrid theme there. Uh, yeah, hybrid theme, uh, page builders and block themes. Uh, I probably should have done this a bit better side by side, but yeah, page builders and block themes are similar. Um, full site editing is, is a similar um, level as so is headless WordPress. So what have we got? We've got 73% are satisfied with recent ACF support experience. I think that was in the 90s last year. So that's something that we've taken back to our um, our support team and our support manager to try and understand where that may have, you know, where that dips come from. We've definitely got in the survey, there are some uh, free text fields that, you know, any other feedback. So it'll be, it'll be interesting for our manager to have a look at that and, and see if there's anything to do with the support there. But obviously we've got our support team that are still working hard as ever this year as they did last. So we can see if we can improve on that for next year. Um, and a, a, another high figure for why uh, that people say ACF is important to their workflow. I think that was, let me just double check. I think that was, yeah, 90%. So that's gone down slightly, um, which will be interesting to kind of dig into the results a bit more um, internally. Uh, that's an increase of percent, 57% 57 of people using the block editor build their blocks with ACF blocks. So rather than using native blocks or building custom blocks with React, there's a large proportion of our users, which is kind of understandable being ACF users. And if they're, if they're using ACF Pro, they're building custom blocks with ACF blocks. But that's that's a significant thing for us because obviously that's a, a big part of our pro development to, under, to, to improve the experience for both developers to build ACF blocks 
and content editors to use those blocks um, and in their editing experience. And that's something obviously that would be um, improving in coming major releases. We've got, um, it won't be this year now, but we've got uh, upcoming the ability to kind of change change text in text area or paragraph fields in a custom block and do that without necessarily turning the block into the the edit mode, which turns it into a form effectively. It will be kind of like inline editing of that text and text area. Um, so that's much more of a uh, improving the experience to make it more like uh, native blocks. So that's something obviously we want to see um, increasing over time. The popular extensions and popular page builders are very, very similar to last year. ACF Extended, which is a, a, a really good community plugin um, and a third party plugin for ACF. It, it is still top. Elementor is still the top of the page builder tree, um, which I think is, is not really surprising at the moment. That, I mean, in terms of the field types, text and text area and an image are kind of no brainers there, but seeing the repeater, which is a, you know, a pro field type, but one of those kind of fundamental tools that whenever people are building sites, the repeater just always is there. So it's good to see that being number four. Um, it's, it's definitely a kind of a crucial field type, I think. Uh, length of time using ACF is very similar to last year. Um, there's a lot of people that have been using ACF for a long time, which is great to see. Uh, and obviously, yes, just seeing that kind of the longevity of still building with WordPress, still building, building with ACF. Um, so yeah, great to see. And, and again, the 91% of people that are comfortable updating ACF to the latest version, I think that's kind of probably a nicer metric for the engineering team because they put a lot of thought and care into releases and making sure that releases don't break they are backwards compatible that you know there's obviously always things that we can improve on and sometimes things happen and we have to do um quick fast follow releases but all in all i think that's kind of testament to the large user base of people that are using acf that are comfortable to it's testament to the engineers that they've got um the confidence there because yeah i think we've we've probably not even spoken about it much externally but the last sort of six months, we've had a really big push to make sure that um, our internal release process, our internal testing, we've done a lot of uh, um, investment in automated testing. So our release process is, is so much stronger because we've got a, a better testing base. Um, we've, we, we can test the code um, automatically, which just yeah gives us a lot more confidence in releases. So obviously that's it's good to have that confidence in our in the team but obviously uh, users as well have the same confidence when updating uh what's that 93 percent are likely to continue building on wordpress which is great let's just check what that was last oh that's gone up since last year so that's good to see really good for the platform for for you know for wordpress the project we're all here for wordpress in the end of the day so it's yeah that's that's a nice metric to see going up um 60 of people using version control 40 percent have worked with what multi-site uh, and 23% manage their dependencies like plugins and themes and WordPress core with Composer. Local comes out on top again uh, as the most used tool for local site development. And FTP is the most common deployment method, which still makes me raise an, an eyebrow. I guess that that's it's just the easiest way to get around things nowadays. Um, yeah, so we've, we've got this blog post which breaks down the numbers. Uh, I'm not going to go through too much in that, I don't think, because I think that's that's probably not going to make for a, a, a exciting session. But yeah, the survey. If you have take, if you did take the survey, thank you very much. Um, that was that that has helped us, uh, and we will study this internally and obviously try and make improvements as we talked about with support uh, and product release stuff. Um, but yeah, we we let me just get the chat up there again. Yeah, that is. That is our our survey. Any questions related to the survey? Um, any, any anything interesting? Any data points that people find interesting there? But obviously, feel free to. There's only there's only a small group of us, so if you need to, if you just want to unmute and ask a question, feel free. But we've got the Q and A as well.
Yeah, Jennifer says in the in the chat. It's definitely yeah using it on all sites, building a custom post type and then a set of fields that you can export using multiple sites is so useful. Yeah, we. I've I've been doing some stuff recently on the ACF site itself and other sites, and it just pulling it all together with custom post types now as of six point one last year custom post types, custom taxonomies and custom fields. It's just such a, it's such a, um, it's such a powerful trio that, yeah, I, I, I love using it still because you can just, yeah, create the things, create the custom post types in the UI, export either the JSON or the PHP. And you, yeah, you've got a kind of like a, an easy site building process. So yeah, it's good to, good to hear other people say the same. Diego, good question. Is there a date set for the next major update? There, there is no date set. We we typically don't like giving dates because things change and things, you know, don't like don't like promising things. But yeah, six point four is the next major version that we're, obviously we've been working on uh, for for a while to try and get some stuff in. We've got the the beta version. Uh, well, no, I should, sorry, I should say that we had the alpha version um, available. Not that long ago, I think we're we're planning to release another alpha soon, um, but yeah, six four is probably uh, where, where are we now? We're in November. Oh goodness, that's come around quickly. We are we are looking at end of year for six four, but we'll see how that goes because you know we we've definitely had a few more point releases, minor versions than we expected at this time, so things kind of get pushed out. Um, we're still targeting releasing WooCommerce uh, HPOS support, um, but I think yeah we we will give more updates probably. Where are we? Yeah, ne next session we could probably have some more updates. Yeah, uh, actually Liam, yeah you're right. We've the six point four alpha one, which was available, was made unavailable because we've had obviously a, a slew of security updates from 637 to 6310 and obviously the alpha didn't contain those and we weren't in a we weren't a beta we weren't in a position to backport them very quickly so we just pulled the alpha but yeah alpha 2 is coming soon and then we'll we'll be working on that but yeah diego is there anything specifically you're looking for uh from those releases i know we took or from that release i know we talked about in previous um, chat Fridays that it would be WooCommerce HPOS support, block registration UI, um, the ability, I think I mentioned it earlier about editing a, a block, the text or text area and having that sort of more of an inline editing experience. I, we're, we're unsure whether or not all of that will go in 6.4 and we'll actually just start shipping smaller major releases, if that makes sense, and faster um, with obviously WooCommerce HPOS support being um, the one that's probably comes sooner. So yeah, I mean, no pressure to unmute or let us know, but just if you've got anything that you're specifically waiting on, it's good to hear that. Oh, inline editing, yes. Yeah, that's, I think the the, the next alpha uh, has some block refactoring sort of behind the scenes that will make that maybe easier when that does come, but yeah, I'm sorry we can't give you any any kind of uh, imminent timelines for that. Could I ask? This is Jennifer. Um, with the inline editing, is that is that like the bidirectional thing? So you would, if you edit it in a block, it would update in the database, or are you talking about like if it's like a tiny thing and your content person would be able to make a quick Change. Yeah, it's more for the content editor when they're editing in the block editor. If if you as the developer have created a, a custom block using ACF blocks and you've obviously and you've got ACF fields for that block, typically they would edit those fields either in the sidebar or in the main block area. They would see the preview of your your block, which is rendering your block PHP template. 
but if they if they click on the the block toolbar to turn it into edit mode they would get that form and they would also see all the fields but that it, it itself is a bit of a a non well it's an anti pattern of the block editor sort of user experience and ui so the idea behind this this feature that inline editing that diego's mentioned and 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 we will be coming soon is if you've got the block in preview mode and you've spe specified in your php template this is like a paragraph of text that is rendering the acf field which may be a text area field for for the content editor they they'll be able to click on that text in the preview mode and it will give you a cursor and you can just edit it in line and then it will also update in the sidebar in that form and so yeah they can the, the content editing experience is going to be much smoother i will let one of the engineers answer the diego's question about react yeah happy to um so yeah so so far most of our work for 6.4 has been in the block refactor. Uh, Phil has taken the biggest chunk out of that one by far. Um, so Phil, I think you're working at a coffee shop if you wanna. I am, There's there might be some background noise, but uh, yeah, I can I can speak to that a little bit if you want. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. sound fine to me. But... Sure, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, we've been working on refactoring some of the, because obviously anything in the block editor it needs to use React because it, you know it's all it's all built with React. So, um, I mean, personally, I love React. React is kind of my jam. It's my thing, um, right? For the last few years, um, but you know, because of that, it's it's nice that we can take what you would normally need to do with React and make you able to do it with PHP. Um, I think that that that's a that's a great thing, and so. Um, it did did mean that we have to do some some refactoring because we're trying to sync up um, not just PHP but also jQuery, which is what most of the, the ACF um, JavaScript runs on. So, um, trying to make React and and jQuery uh, communicate well with each other and just improving some of the the logic uh, binding between the two. So, some of that refactoring work is what we're doing, and and I think the current hope is. Nobody will really even notice that we've done these these refactoring things, um, and that's what'll be coming in the next alpha version. Is is that? And the hope would be you don't notice anything, but that does unlock some of this new stuff that we're going to be doing um, with ACF logs. So yeah, that will be good thing. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I I personally very much yeah. enjoy working with React. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. I personally haven't used React, so I can't comment. Yeah, so I used uh, it several years ago, but coming back to it with ACF blocks and especially seeing Phil's refactor because, you know, we're moving away from these class components that we were using before in React and switching over to functional components and kind of more modern React. Um, it's definitely, definitely enjoyable. Don't miss working with uh, jQuery or don't particularly enjoy working when, with it when I do have to. So it's nice to switch over to React more in ACF. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Jennifer, I, I see what you're saying. Um, but I think, I, I think that's ne not necessarily a, a thing that you have to learn React. I mean, for us, the whole point of ACF blocks is it's this bridge between PHP development and the, the React powered block editor that enables you not to have to learn React because you can create blocks with some PHP, a template, maybe, you know, the block.json for, for more advanced configuration of the block, but you don't actually have to create a custom block using React. Like we do, well, we, the engineers do all that hard work to make that kind of that compatibility layer so you can build ACF blocks without touching React. Um, but obviously that I'm I'm not gatekeeping your learning. You can do, you can, you know, that React is is a good thing to do. It's just not necessary, not necessarily necessary for block development with ACF. Oh, that's great to hear.
Yeah, I think, and and just to not to labour the point about ACF blocks too much, but I think that's the thing we do hear quite a bit, that if people have built custom blocks with React, the way Gutenberg, the plugin, which when that gets developed and then released and rolled into core, it moves quite quickly in terms of development. So sometimes custom blocks can just get broken because they are using something that Gutenberg has now changed and, and you know, you have to then be on top of, oh, that that block that my client in this site over there has now added, when they go to edit it, the block no longer appears and they've got an error message or whatever. So sometimes even doing it the React way is tricky and has problems. So I think that, that that's one of the things that like the engineers are at every release of WordPress where the block editor gets improved or Gutenberg gets merged in, things change. They're taking care of all of that kind of breakability and making sure that ACF blocks will be backwards compatible, to, you know, regardless of what happens in core. Um, so it's the, the the sort of the value and the benefit of ACF blocks isn't just not touching React. It's just it's also making sure that blocks will continue to work and be backwards compatible, whatever happens. So yeah. Uh, okay, right. Where are we? No, no current questions on Q and A, but yeah, happy to take anything more in chat or anyone wants to let us know anything cool they're building. Diego, good timing. Right, Diego says when saving ACF field groups and saving the JSON file in the theme, is there any recommendation to how to version control between different environments, specifically the deletion of an ACF field, as when deleting the file, the field group locally and then pushing the changes to a different environment the deleted field group is still present in the db huh i think my personal recommendation there is that you don't really have to like especially if you're using json and you have it all version controlled and you have like a local development environment or something you don't really need to sync them to the database um you can actually just keep so if you have a local site with JSON enabled and you're in the field group editor and you're creating your field groups and your fields, et cetera. Um, you can just sync that to the remote site and you don't need, you can push that to the remote site, but you don't actually need to sync it to the database. Um, all the fields will still be um, used on the remote site but you don't have to worry about syncing or deleting fields from the database, unless I've totally misunderstood your question, in which case I apologize. Yeah, it might be worth, we, we can take a look at that support topic in the, uh, you know, the, the ACF support forums just to maybe get a bit of an understanding. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll, I'll ping that to our, I'll put that into our team uh, chat so we can make sure we pick that up because obviously we we'll lose it in the Zoom. Maybe we can dive into that support topic and, and help out. I think ACF might now delete field groups based on the existence of the JSON file. Okay, yeah, let's... That, that Diego. would be a bug if that's what's happening. Um, but the expected behavior there is the JSON file just always takes precedence over whatever is stored in the database. Um, and it's it's for that kind of reason, right? Where if you're deploying JSON, you know, via version control between, let's say like development and staging, um, whatever you push up to, you know, the staging site, in that JSON will take precedence over what's stored in the database, just in case you don't go through and, um, you know, sync the JSON file back to the database, the JSON will still be used. Um, yes, we do have a hook for saving the options page. Um, I can try and dig that up. Yeah, we do. We had that not that long ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just added that to the chat. 
Nice. Yeah, sure, Paul, go for it. You have a web build for a client with Fison, trying to create a query loop on a single archive template in Bricks that filters out testimonials for all but one service. I've created a loop with all the services displayed, but I'm struggling to filter out the unwanted services per page. What would be the best practice? Hmm. I feel like this this is more maybe an implementation question in Bricks, because I don't know if we're that familiar with how the query loop in Bricks works and how ACF relates to that. Uh, I've created the loop with all the so. So are those services set up as CPTs or? Taxonomies, yeah. Yeah. And test the testimonials are CPTs as well, I guess, yeah. It, pro it would probably be the relationship field where you could, you could then set a relationship on, go and edit the service. The relationship field brings in all the, t the testimonials and then you select the which ones are which ones are relevant to that service. And then you'd, on the service page, you'd iterate through those, the testimonial IDs that are selected in the relationship field. I think that would, that's probably, that's probably how we would do that. Yeah, the 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 actual build questions are really interesting, but they're quite hard to visualize unless we've like sometimes it would be quite good to have a session where we kind of get up a site and be like, oh, that okay, that's a custom post up, that's a custom post up, this is the single page, like, and that, it's really hard for me to not vis to not be able to visualize it. Yeah, I have a similar question about like the flexible content fields. Hmm. So just as like a sort of a simple example, say you have, um, you want to list partners in people. So you'd have like a headshot and then their name and their title and their company. Would that be the kind of use, like, would I want to use flexible content as a way of kind of creating a layout for that? Or would it just be easier to do a block for uh so you're building you're building with the block editor is that right well that's what i'm trying to decide like i have already created the custom post type so i've i've been collecting the the data of, is that of for it. the people right yeah um and now i'm trying to figure out what's the best way to put it on the page like would it because uh, i'm i think it might just be easier to do a php page template but um, I'm trying to kind of learn to do the blocks and, and what the easiest, you know, what the, the most forward thinking way of building this would be. And, and presumably, could, oh, sorry, Matt. I was going to say, I think you definitely could set it up as a block um, if you want to and using the block builder, block editor makes sense in this scenario. Um, you could create an ACF block with like a, you know, a field that lets you sel select, I guess it would be. Um, Probably the relationship or post object multiple, I guess. Yeah, 
one of those post object or relationship. Um, and then in your block template, you could just check what the value for that is. You know, is it this user, that user, get their ID, uh, the user ID from that. Um, and then, you know, grab the custom fields or, you know, whatever fields you need for that user and just display it in the block. Um, that's probably how I would set it up, but I think, you know, flexible content is fine as well. Um, but it, it, it actually might be a bit easier with the block editor, I think. Yeah. I don't think we, I don't think we recommend mixing flexible content with custom blocks or the block editor. I think if you're going to, if you're gonna, if you were building your page with maybe like the flexible content and the flexible content layouts as the way to build the content for that page, which is mm -hmm. completely different to the block editor, like it's more of a kind of a classic way of building with ACF, still completely valid. With you know, we see people do it. I do it myself. It's it's really easy to have a kind of refined, um, a defined editing process, but you'd use a flexible content layout that would be you know your people your people layout. And in that flexible content layout, you'd have a subfield that says, go and pick your people. And those are the people that are going to be displayed in that layout. And you'd obviously, you know, iterate through the, the selected people and do your, your, your markup in your template. But in the block editor, yeah, you could create a custom field, a, a, yeah, a custom, sorry, a custom block, which had either a post object field or relationship field that said, give me all the people listed and then, but I'm going to go and select five from those. And then in your block custom block template, you would loop over that array of five and output your data for the, for the people, the name, the position, whatever. And that would be in your PHP template of your block. Um, and that's the, those are the ACF ways of doing it. Like the sort of classic ACF way with flexible content or ACF blocks, but you could also probably do it, you know, with the block, uh, editor with like a query loop block, which is completely different to ACF, but you could still obviously use ACF fields for those people potentially in those query loop block. It's query loop block, yeah. But I think yeah, if you're using a block editor, I would I would go with an ACF block that has either a relationship field or a post object field that allows you to select multiple, and your editor can then choose which people they want, and you control the output in your custom block. Um, template right right so even just having like either by taxonomy they would choose or or by like a publish or not publish this person kind of yeah because yeah because i think it say say your custom post type holds all 100 people in the company but on the page that you're editing now you only want to show the senior execs for example Mm -hmm. You would you would either yeah filter that by a taxonomy on the people that is like role or something like that, or you would just allow the content editor to select the five senior execs, you know, by eye basically, and then they would be selected in a relationship field to say, right, well, we've got all these custom post types, but these are the five IDs of the people that we want to show in this block. Okay. Thank you. Cool, no worries. I think you also mentioned that you could, you were thinking about doing a PHP template. I assume you meant like in a theme, like in a classic style theme, um, yeah. which is also totally fine. Like, I don't see any problem with that at all either. Like, if you want to, if you say you have a custom post type for people and then you have a taxonomy that says senior management or whatever, you just, when you're editing the CEO, you check off that box or that's the taxonomy for that person. And then you just, you know, you use the loop like you always used to in PHP and you can render whatever HTML you want inside your template file. Like personally, that's my go. That that would be how I go. Like I, that would be the way I prefer to work. Um, even though I love React and, you know, I work in the block editor, but if I'm working on a project like this, I still love PHP. Like I still like, that's my preference. So I'm always just like, what works? what gets the job done, you know, like what, what makes right. sense project to project. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the way I, I, I lean toward doing that just because that's what I've done in the past. So I just want to make sure that I'm not, you know, kind of being a Luddite and not learning how to use the new blocks, but like, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like I, my, my, uh, like, 
mantra is always like, don't add complication unless there's a good reason to. If mm -hmm. it's, you know, if there's a good reason to, sure, then. But if it's just to not feel like a Luddite, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy to be a Luddite, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Paul, as well, for your other question. Um, we are at time, actually. We've gone over, which is nice. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for coming. We should wrap it up. Um, as I said, we'll put this recording on the website, on a, on a blog post, so you can always refer back to it and catch future versions on there. And we will see you again in about four weeks' time, I think, or about a month. So thanks for coming. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Ciao.